Shalom, I'm John Carney Roth, and this is another edition of Something to Think About. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope today's message will be enlightening and eye-opening as to some very complicated things that happen with human beings. And I discovered this, um, well, I've discovered it years ago, but I discovered it in a case that I had to deal with here recently where a person had unclean spirits and they had to go and they really weren't not the main problem for this particular person, although they did exasperate and confuse the person. And this kind of really is more about what this message is today, which is the subconscious shadow mind and the altered personality that dominates and blocks the spirit of forgiveness. Well, this is very important because this is what was the dynamic that caused a problem for this person that I was dealing with. And what had happened was these unclean spirits were just simply causing a lot of disturbance in the person's conscious mind in order to block access to the shadow self or the subconscious mind where a number of things have gone on over the years that the conscious person wasn't fully aware of or did not know how to deal with. So what happened was the subconscious mind was holding a lot of traumatic events in the life of this person that this person just simply did not know how to go back and revisit those experiences, reinterpret the meanings of them, and be able to release it from the subconscious mind so it did not plague and destroy the life of this person on a day-to-day -day basis. I meet a lot of people like this, and there are varying degrees of how much of this really causes problems for people, but this one was an extreme because this one here was totally destroying every area of the life of this person with family, with friends, um, with uh, substance abuse and different things like that. And this is not about condemnation. This is actually about a message about restoration and how we can get to that place. And when these different things are going on with a person, it's very difficult for them to be able to deal with this on their own. And so thus we need the Messiah to come in. So we were brought in and um, we were able to address the unclean spirits, as I said, and get them out of the way. But there was still another dynamic, dynamic that was left over that had to be dealt with a, a few days later as Yahweh had revealed to me what was going on. And I'm going to touch on some of this today. It, this is not intended to be uh, an exhaustive uh, discussion on this subject because this could really go on for a couple hours. I'm just going to try to break it down into its very simplistic form so that the average person can understand it and hopefully become aware that if this is what's going on in your life, whether it's at an extreme level or a very superficial level, it still makes you dysfunctional either way. So this is about freeing yourself from past hurts and by confronting the shadow self. Now this is hard to do on a regular basis because our pride gets in the way and we like to make reasonings and justifications for why we want to hold on to the past. But those things damage us as scriptures say. And it's important for us to be able to release that. And Yahshua said that if we don't forgive our brother of his sins, neither will our father in heaven forgive us of our sins. So we're going to wind up staying in this trap state where the shadow self is ruling over the conscious person and is causing all kinds of problems in their life and makes them very dysfunctional and hard to get along with. So the subconscious shadow self has its own pride and blocks access to resolution from past hurts. And that's what happened with this person. What happened was they were so dominated by the shadow self that had so much stuff going on in their past from the time that they were a little child that it caused so much trauma and damage emotionally that the conscious person literally could not admit that they were holding things against people, even people they couldn't even remember anymore because this is regressed memory now. This is suppressed memory that's going on in the subconscious mind that has built a wall and blocked and protected it. The problem is, is that that's what causes the conscious person to act out in ways that don't seem to be logical. And the anger and the vitriol and the bitterness and the resentment seems to just come from somewhere that just doesn't make sense to the average person when they're on the receiving end of this. And this is what was going on. And so on one hand, the 
subconscious mind or the shadow self wants resolution to these things. But at the same time, it blocks the conscious person from accessing it when it's this traumatic. And that's what was going on here. So too many traumatic deep-seated past experience take over the conscious mind, causing a dysfunctional life. Unclean spirits use this to gain power over the consciousness. So what these unclean spirits were doing is they were exasperating the problem. What they were doing is they were poking and prodding and filling the conscious mind with concepts and ideas that kind of linked to this, but also it was like a shield that was preventing access to the subconscious mind so that it couldn't be touched. But what Yahweh wants is he wants those things to come out of us. He wants those those traumatic areas in our life to be settled in our spirit so our spirit is not in an unsettled state. And so we have to play an active role in this. But unfortunately, like in this case, this poor person was so traumatized that just, they just could not access that area. It was like a blindness that had come over them. So it was up to us, my wife and myself, to be able to come in and open this up. And so what we did was on our final meeting, Yahweh had said to me, this is where you got to go. So I began to explain about the, the spirit of unforgiveness that was being hidden in the shadow self, in the subconscious mind. And this person was denying, no, I don't hold anything against anybody. And, and so what you have to do is you have to press in with force. And you have to force your way through this, even though the person's resisting, because you have to understand this is just a protection device. It doesn't want you to access that area. It doesn't want to be touched. But on the other hand, it's restless in nature. It can't stop behaving the way that it does. So it's a very, very complicated situation. And it takes time to really understand this and actually go through these experience uh, to be able to deal with this. But I pressed in. And then finally, after about, I would say maybe five minutes or so, all of a sudden this person started coming up with one example after another, how they had not forgiven this and they've not forgiven that and this person and that person. I said, you see, this is what I'm talking about. You have just validated what I had said to you that you have unforgiveness going on. And that was the root that sprung up and caused all these problems. And so the person's like, but how do I access that? I said, the very fact that we're sitting here and forcing this issue into the subconscious, the subconscious has to release it. You have to take authority over your life if you're able to do this. This person wasn't able to do it freely on their own because of the inhibiting factors as I already described. But what they were able to do was they, because they wanted a desire for this to come out, but didn't know how to do it, which is okay. All this is a process. This person, because out of their own mouth stated that this is what they wanted to do, but didn't know how to do it. The, the subconscious mind released some examples that this person said they have never told anybody, even their own mother and father. And so I can understand, based on what they said, why this was locked away so deep in their mind. And this became a stronghold in their life that caused all this different dysfunctional things that were going on. So traits of the shadow self are what? Uh, you could say low self-esteem, false beliefs, anxieties, violence, and undefined un, uh, grievances with people. And so... People like to make up in their minds why they have grievances with people and they justify holding their position of unforgiveness. And this is in itself is a spirit that has to be contended with. And so this person had all of these elements of low self-esteem, false beliefs, anxieties, violence, and undefined grievances. And so now this person is beginning to understand how to reach inside along with studying Yahweh's word and the words of Yahshua, how to be freed of this. And so this is going to be an ongoing thing because this person has been going through this deliverance now for about three years. 
And it's a very, very traumatic thing because you're ripping at the soul, you're ripping at the mind, you're ripping at the conscience, you're ripping at pride, you're ripping at so many different elements. It is extremely traumatic to watch a person go through this when they're in that deep. So memory regression is what I was telling this person is where they kind of go and allow themselves to explore the various areas of their lives where they had these defining moments of trauma and how that's going to help them to bring it out into the open and redefine what that experience is and release it. Say, so I'm not going to hold this against this person or this circumstance any longer because it's for your own healing. If you don't release that, you're not going to get healed and you're going to continue to be um, dysfunctional in your life. And that's not what the Messiah wants. So memory regression is about getting leverage over the pressed events in the past to achieve resolution. You want resolution, but you got to start on this journey. And it's not necessarily something you're going to achieve in one day. This is something that the mind releases over a period of time and you come to grips with it and you deal with it as it comes along. The conscious mind is where the free moral will resides, allowing you leverage to free yourself to serve the Messiah. And it's got to be done through the Messiah. All this is done through the Messiah, Yahshua HaMashiach, and our Father Yahweh in heaven. And so... This has to be the foundation. You can't just do this from a pop psychology perspective. It's a very complicated thing. And at the end of the day, they are unclean spirits that want to hold you into the state of bondage with these strongholds that blurs your mind, blurs your consciousness, where you can't access these things. You don't know how to do it. But one thing I would say is you got to do a lot of prayer. And this person was doing a lot of prayer for this deliverance. And eventually Yahweh came through and allowed them. Like I said, this is an ongoing process. It's not something that this person is going to lick in one day. But they've made great strides. And I applaud them for that because it has been agonizing for this person. I, I can't stress that enough. It is extremely agonizing because you're redefining who you are. You're coming out of the world, out of the Babylonian system, and you're coming and redefining yourself in the Messiah, Yahshua. What does he say in the scripture? Let this mind be in you that is in the, the mind of Messiah, Yahshua HaMashiach, and that we ought to walk as he walked, as Paul said. Well, I want to leave you with Psalms 119, uh, 112 through 18, that kind of deals a little bit with this. And it says in verse 112, I have inclined by stretching out my heart where my feelings, will, and intellect are to perform your statutes that are appointments as cut into stone as a law-giving scribe forever and to the very end. See, friends, you're going to have to make a conscious decision. Without the commandments of Yahweh, you're not going to be able to understand what's going on inside you. There's no way it's going to happen. He's not going to wave a magic wand and just impart by fiat all this understanding to you. This comes through obedience to his word, and you're doing it to the end, and you must be thoroughly convinced and convicted of this concept if you're going to go down this road. Verse 113, I hate the double-minded who is a skeptic. And boy, I meet a lot of people who are very double-minded. But I love with affection your law that points like a finger to teach. When a teacher teaches, he points his fingers to things to try to show and point out to you concepts that help you to understand what the, the, the teacher is trying to teach in that moment. And that's what his law is all about. Law simply means teacher. That's all it is. It's there to teach you how to walk in righteousness, how to walk in a right way in this life, that you can walk successfully in this life, to stay out of sin and transgression against the law, so that you don't receive the penalty and the curse of that, which ultimately is death. That's what being under the law is, is you're under the death penalty when you refuse to keep his commandments. Funny because our country is kind of founded on the Ten Commandments and in our courts and public settings and, and governmental buildings we have the Ten Commandments. We don't keep the Ten Commandments, friends. We don't. It's, it's a misnomer. Why do we have these things there and yet we reject the very 
emblems that we put there about the Ten Commandments. We don't keep them. Examine yourself. See if whether or not you really are keeping the Ten Commandments. I think you're going to find most of you are going to say no. And I would say even most all of us are not keeping the commandments. We've already defined in our minds how much of it we're going to keep, but we're not willing to go beyond that. That's a stronghold also. And that's something that we need to learn how to let go of. Verse 114, you are my hiding place of protection and my shield like the scaly hide of a crocodile. And that's, that's really tough. We got gators down here. I know how that is. I hope with patience in your word. So in other words, when you stay in his word, you do it with patience, knowing that in the end you will be vindicated and you will be rewarded with whatever your reward is supposed to be by staying steadfast in that word, which is his commandments. Verse 115, depart from me, you evildoers who are good for nothing in a social, physical, or moral sense, for I will keep, guard, and protect the commandments, the divine law of my Elohim. This is our mandate. This is what it says in the New Testament when Yahshua says that the will of the Father is that we keep his commandments. He gave it to him, and we're supposed to keep it. Uphold, in verse 116, and establish me according to your word as a stated promise that I may live with a restored life and do not let me be ashamed, delayed disappointment of my hope. We don't want that. We want to be able to maintain that faithfulness that we will get vindicated in the end. Verse 17, 117, hold me up with comfort and refreshing, and I shall be safe with salvation. I shall observe with amazement and respect of your statutes that are appointments as cut into stone as a law given by scribes continually. And you've got you to gotta cut that into the stone of your heart. The law is supposed to be written on your heart. It's not supposed to be stone anymore. It's supposed to be a heart of flesh. And he wants his living law on a living heart. That's what he wants. Verse 118, you reject all those who stray by misleading others to transgress with intoxication, with ignorance from your statutes that are appointments as cut into stone as a law giving scribe for their deceit that comes from fraud and as falsehood that is a lying sham. Friends, we have been lied to. And there's the prophecies state that in the end times, that those who are of Ephraim are going to stand, stand up and say, we have been lied to by our forefathers. And we have been lied to by our forefathers. We've been told that we don't need to keep these commandments. But these commandments... In Yahweh's eyes is a way of seeing that you are willing to humble yourself before him and do his will. And when he does that, he will reward you. He will then allow those things that are in the recesses of your mind, your shadow self, your subconscious, that you're too afraid to deal with. And remember, the law is a law of love. The fulfillment of the law is love. And perfect love casts out all fear. So we don't have to have this fear about confronting the shadow self, the subconscious mind that holds these traumas in our life, and we can be free to be let them go. This is something I want you to think about because it is important. So until the next time, Shalom.